What's going on, everybody? Tanae here with the Tanae Show, here with a special guest. You may recognize this face, Deron from 112. What's going on? Hey, I'm chilling. How you doing? I'm great. I'm great. So I've been trying to get in touch with you for a while, so thank you for giving me this opportunity. So let's just get right into it. You're in Charlotte. Yeah. How is the city treating you so far? Oh, awesome. It's a lot of love out here, and you know, I appreciate it. We've always got a lot of love in Charlotte, so... Cool. Yeah, so you have a show tonight. Good luck. So give us a little snippet of like what we can expect. Well, you know, basically, um, I've been in the game for 20 years and just talking to the fans and talking to my supporters online, we just kind of realized that it was time to reconnect with the foundation of R&B. And um, I think a lot of people can agree with that. So I'm going to be singing a lot of timeless classics like Luther Vandross, Stevie mm -hmm. Wonder, things of that nature. Then of course I'm gonna give a little bit of 112 because you know, yeah. you know we gotta do that. So I'm gonna <laughs> have a, a medley of that, and then my new single is called "Say Something." That's how it's on all formats right now. Okay, let's talk about "Say Something." Where did it come from? Like, where did the idea come from, and what's the feedback that you've been getting so far? Well, the feedback has been amazing. You know, the "Say Something" challenge kind of went, you know, pretty mm -hmm. good for me. I got a lot of people doing it, but I think the inspiration is just—it's just about courtship. You know, it's about seeing a woman that you like and then definitely courting her, but doing it in a respectful way. And I think, you know, we just need some songs like that. We got a lot of songs out here that's not on that vibe, you know what I'm yeah, saying? And, right. you know, I done wrote some songs like that myself. <laughs> you know, I'm a player of things of that nature, but I think it's time just to get back to the quality of R&B where it's talking about, you know, courtship and love. It's time to get back to the love. Mm. So. I love that. And then kind of going back off of the writing, you've done a lot of that. I mean, a lot that we probably don't really know of or a lot of people don't know of. Yeah. What are some, who are some credits in, as far as like the artists that you've wrote, written for? Well, I've written for Usher, Pink, uh, Keisha Cole, of course, 112, uh, mm, Faith Evans, Kelly yeah. Price. Um, I don't know. It's, it's hard to you say. You just say it like yeah. it's nothing. That is amazing. Like, wow. So where do these ideas come from? Is this like I'm just sitting at home or I'm riding down the street? Like, where do the creative juices come from? Well, I've always been in the music and I've always been in the playing instruments. So, and I started playing in the church um, initially. So a lot of my influence musically comes from gospel, like the sound of it, the chords that you might hear, like the harmony or some of the melodies. But a lot of the songs I write are really from life experiences. Like, uh, for example, it's a song that I wrote for Keisha Cole uh, called I Should Have Cheated. Oh, yeah, I think we all. Yeah. That was my anthem <laughs> one year. What? And, and the song was inspired by a conversation that I had with one of my friends at the time where uh -huh. she was just going on and on about this guy, you know, that she was dating who was accusing her of all these different things. And, and she was talking about how stressful that was. And then I just remember... Within the conversation, that was one of the things he said, you know, I, I should have cheated. You know, as much as he accused me, I should have cheated. Wow. And it just kind of stuck with me. So when I was in the studio um, writing the song, it was actually for Nivea. A lot of okay. people don't know that. So Nivea didn't uh, take the record, and it ended up sitting in my studio for like seven years. Then Keisha wow. Cole came along. So by the time y'all heard it, it was probably she like 10 years old. On that, for real. <laughs> I love that. I love it. So let's talk 112 for a minute. You know, everybody wants to hear about 112. Yeah. Um, you've had a great run, and y'all are still doing it. I mean, your, your CD, um, Q, Slim, did I get it right? Yeah. Q, Mike, Slim. Q, Mike, Slim, Duran. Right. Amazing. Love it. I think my favorite song on there is um, Both of Us. Um, I even love the thank you. The um, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean the beat on that is crazy, like it's ridiculous. So talk about like the the run that you all have had. I know that when you first came in the game, you probably you were younger, yeah. you were you know less mature, immature. So talk about that whole jump to the manhood now, because I hear the sounds. Yeah, yeah. I mean basically. We were just some kids in high school singing, and, and we was winning talent shows all, all over Atlanta, and that's how we got discovered, and then we got our deal, and, you know, we basically were drafted out of high school. Like, we came out as 17-year-old, 18-year-old kids. So, I mean, back then, we were just doing it, and it was just our job. It was what we loved to do, right. but we were just singing and doing music and dancing and, and traveling the world, but for us, it was kind of like another day at the office, but mm -hmm. it was still our passion, and it was still what we loved. So, I mean, we, it's like we woke up one day and realized the impact that we had, had on yeah. music. And it was like, wow, did we really had this impact yeah. on music? And it was, it was amazing. I mean, some people are like, y'all don't even know who y'all are. They say that a lot For of real? times because, you know, we still had that humility. But 
it, it took us a long time to realize the impact that we had had on, on mm -hmm. the music scene. So Yeah, you it's have a, a really big impact. Yeah. One of my favorite groups of all time for sure, hands down. Um, I'm not just saying that. One of my favorite groups. So you all have toured with a lot of people as well. Um, a lot of big names. What has been your favorite experience, tour life? I think um um, I have to say Whitney Houston. We took, we had the privilege of touring with, with, with Whitney Houston, uh, rest in peace. And it was this one time that we was on tour with her, and they basically ambushed us with water guns. Ooh. And it was it was a fun thing because you know we had a day off on the tour, mm -hmm. and she was like, yeah, you know, tell the guys that, you know, I want them to come to the park, and we just gonna you know have some fun, you know, have some food there, drinks, da da da. So we show up at this park and her and her dancers and her whole crew, they oh, just wow. ambushed us with these super oh, soaker man. guns. So, you know, we That's couldn't crazy. have that. So we went straight to the Walmart and we just <laughs> had an all out war that day. But that was one of my favorite amazing. stories of just like touring with different artists. Wow. That is amazing. Another story is pretty funny. We was on tour with Ron Isley, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And uh, I was kind of working with Kelly Price at that time. And, uh, you know, he was kind of like, He's really like a mega, mega star, and he really has that attitude like that mega star. So we in the dressing room, we in the back, and and I'm just happen to be walking past, you know, his dressing room, and I just hear from outside, "Where is my hairdresser? Where is my hairdresser?" I never forgot that. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I was like, yo, this guy, he's off the chain with it. Wow. In between the sheets. Right. <laughs> I love it. That is amazing. Wow. I'm sure you got stories for days. Oh, yeah. So talk about the guys, um, like, as an individual. Like, who's the sex symbol of the group? Like, who's the funniest? Who's, what's the personalities like? Um, I don't know. That's, that's a good question. I mean, I know off the top of my head, Mike is definitely the comedian. Um, okay. I mean... I don't know. I think Q is probably the sex symbol. <laughs> I mean, he, he gets the most screams at the show. So, oh, no. yeah, yeah. When he takes his shirt off, it's a wrap. It's over. Yeah. So, um, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, of course, back to you. So, what are you wanting every, everyone to get from your music? You're, you know, you're touring, you're doing your own thing. Your, your music is amazing. What are you wanting to leave with the people, like when you're out there on the stage? I mean, I think my main thing is just being authentic you know, to who I am and just showing my love and my passion for the music. Like, I've been passionate about music and sharing music, you know, since I was a child. You know, I remember learning the songs on the piano at the house and going to school and playing them for the um, for my classmates and just mm -hmm. seeing the looks on their faces and just really being, you know, feel, finding a purpose in that. And so that's just really my main thing, like keeping it 100 and, and making it all about the music and positivity and just growing, you know what I'm saying? And just, you know, when you come to my show, you just understand, like, Hey, yo, that boy put on a show. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, you definitely got them dance moves. I was like, I may have to get him to show me a little something. <laughs> I think I could do a little something, something. <laughs> so <laughs> I can. So can we expect another album? I know we're pushing it, but can we expect another album from 112? Maybe. Uh, maybe in the future. You know, you know, time will tell. Mm -hmm. Basically, you know, because we really didn't expect to put out the last one. It just kind of just came from us coming together and touring and always doing the classics and just kind of feeling inspired. So, mm -hmm. you know, time will tell. We'll see. Okay, so is there anybody that you want to work with that you haven't worked with to date? You didn't work with damn everybody, but... Well, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind working with uh, Jay-Z, Beyonce. Mm -hmm. You know, I know this kind of sounds like no. cliche or whatever, but... You put I mean, it out there in the air. Yeah. You watching yeah. this, Jay or B? Yeah. And I and I might be working with her pretty soon. We was, we was talking about that, the artist, her. Oh, yeah, so nice. I was just talking about that with a, co a colleague of mine, so be on the lookout she's for that. Dope, yeah, yeah, she's crazy dope. I just went to the um, Chris Brown concert, and I don't really listen to her music, but now I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I could definitely see you writing for her. So before we get out of here, I'm not going to hold you. I know you got to go make the lady scream and, you know, <laughs> serenade them. <laughs> but before we get out of here, like, is there something that we don't know about you, you know, that's not out there in the public. It could be bad, good, that you want to clear up, or anything that you want to leave with the people. No, I ain't, I ain't got no drama. I just appreciate the love, you know what I'm saying? Wow. I appreciate the love. We've been, we've been doing this for so long. You know, I'm 21 years in the game, and I just appreciate everybody still being here and being supportive, you know, no matter what. That's, that's real. I mean, a lot of people say we got them Tupac fans. That's, that's what mm -hmm. they call them. And, and I just appreciate that type of love where they support us, you know. If it's me by myself, if it's me and Q doing something together, if it's all four of us, 
you know, the fans always come out and show us their love, and, and I and I just appreciate that. Yeah. Now, uh, before we leave, you guys say something. Say, say something. something. Go ahead and sing. Say something. No, nah, I ain't going to. I'm going to say that. Oh, oh, I knew. I knew it. I just knew he was going to do that. We can't even get a little little five seconds. No, we're going to save it for the show. We need to All right. We're going to save it for the show, guys. I tried. Depot. Extravaganza Events Depot. Come out. Okay. It's going to be lit. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me.